Let it be known that the true light shines in every woman and man that cometh into the world. The true light that shineth in the darkness, but the darkness comprehendeth it not. Let us all within air of this true light fellowship hour bear witness to the true light within, that we may, like the real and living Messiah, Yahshua Karast, who many know today as Jesus Christ, pick up and bear our own cross, that we may be worthy of the Messiah by way of the Karast or Christ consciousness, known also as the first resurrection. And as we are now living in these times, let us all rise from our sleep and slumber and do the works of the Most High Heavenly One this day and every day. As we say, Amun, 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 and Namastu, which simply means, I bow to the divinity in you. Well, Namastu and Happy Mother's Day. Um, I know some 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 um, some fathers that also celebrate Mother's Day too. So Happy Mother's Day to you all as well. <laughs> my, my my father is one of them, you know. But really and truly, want to just say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, all the mothers to be, and. I want to just say that today's sermon is all about the mother, it's all about the reality of, of what motherhood um, truly is and, and where it started from as the woman is the mother of all living. Before I start, I want to also greet our listening congregation and just encourage all of those who are listening. Many of you stop me in the street and you tell me how much you enjoy the sermons and I'm very thankful that you are listening and we would love to see you here on a Sunday 9 a.m. or on a Wednesday for our True Light Fellowship and Bible Study which is at 7 p.m. and um, get to know you a little bit better and of course for those of you who are here and who are normally here it's always good to see each and every one of you I hope you have your Bibles ready and, and something to write with we're going to walk through the scriptures and delve deeper into the mysteries of Atonism so let us jump first and foremost into the book of Genesis Chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And we want to look at. We're going to jump right to, to, to verse 21. Because our first understanding of the woman biblically in the King James Version of the Bible comes in Genesis chapter 2 in this particular portion between Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 to 24 and biblically speaking this is the beginning or manifestation of the first family and biblically this is or would be considered the very first mother's day okay and it grows on to say, And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, all of our lives, that has been preached at us, taught to us, and, 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 and I guess many people's best attempts, they try to explain 
how the woman was taken from man. Now, in the Holy Coptic Church, we obviously recognize that there are many people who believe or accept this as a reality, and that's fine. That's fine. We say, for those who choose to believe that, Amun or Amen. And if it works for you, beautiful. However, we understand also in the Holy Coptic Church that as you continue to read in the book of Genesis, if we go to Genesis chapter 3 and 20, there's another statement that's made that brings everything into question. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verse 20 says, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, it says, She shall be called woman, first and foremost, because she was taken out of man. But that wasn't her name, according to the scripture, you know, the King James Version. Verse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, then goes on to say that he named the, the woman, his wife, Eve, because she was the mother of all living, which is the title of today's sermon, the mother of all living. So, we can go back to... I'd like to say, let's say primary school. Let's say primary school. We can go back to primary school right now because we want to clarify and understand what the word all means. Yes? And before we go into our understanding of the word all, look into the Strong's Concordance because it's important that we realize that we have to go into the languages that the scriptures were revealed in in order to appreciate what was being said. That word all is the word kol, K-O-L-E, which ultimately comes from the word kul. Okay? Alright? As in all of us in here, or all as in everything in existence. Okay? But let's read what it has here as call. Properly the whole. Hence all. Any or every. In the singular only, but often in a plural sense, in all manner. All together. Any manner. Enough. Every. Etc. 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 The whole. So, all living means all living the complete the total the mother of all living and on this mother's day there are many mothers out there and, and i hope they're listening and many fathers many children that love their mothers and, and appreciate their mothers and what we must be clear about is that there's no man walking the face of earth today that did not come out of a woman come on there's not one. Okay? Of course, the women came out women too. We just talk, we're talking about a reality that the Greco-Romans and their opinions are placed on us to the point whereby there's been this doctrine of the woman being beneath the man as opposed to truly being one flesh with the man. Our truly standing as a unit one unit all right because we now live in a day and time where there's this this and, and it's nothing new but we're seeing it manifest in new ways and this whole idea of feminism is now also coming to, to, to bear fruit whereby there are women we'll talk about this another time the Sybils you explain who they are 
these are a group of women who use feminism not as a means to get equality but to actually dominate men it's actually a documentary when is they come we'll talk about it it's called the end of men <laughs> end of men okay and so if it's men trying to say that they are the better of the women or if it's women saying that they are, are better than than the men both of those realities cause imbalance and so we have to realize and appreciate that the message today is talking about this duality that comes out of the one the most high heavenly one on the right but in order for us to be able to appreciate the picture we have to get down to the truth because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free you understand and so this story in Genesis is just that a story it's just that a story It's a watered-down version of the original books of the Bible and so that being said let us go to the original books of the Bible book number one the book of creation and before and let us appreciate what was being said before the Greco-Romans got their hands on our original scriptures so this is on page 30 verse 2 of the original books of the Bible it says fear not humanity for from the beginnings of humanity's self-awareness many amongst your species have gazed towards the celestial heavens wondering what wonders lay among them as such our angelic knowledge of the mysteries of the cosmos and our ability to actually explore and move within and throughout the vastness of space will increase that which you have come to believe in as members of humanity causing many amongst you to accept religious myths and blind faith so many of us have come to believe what we've been taught and see all they have to do is get you to believe one lie once you believe that one lie then you open to every other lie and myth that they want to present to you to control you you must come to understand that your soul the bot simply the emotional you or the emotional aspects of your DNA is about to embark upon a journey through time and space within existence through a time not yet encountered by the beast minded known as the behemoth okay the beast minded are referred to as behemoth we talked about this on Wednesday alright these members of humanity alright and the original goddess minded Nubian melaninite female members of humanity called human beings the daughters of the guardian descendants, the Nitaru. So this information is older than the beast minded. It's even older than those that were created by our great ancestors referred to as the Nitaru. And they gave birth to women that were referred to originally as Hugh Mim. Hugh Mim. H U M I M. These original goddess minded human beings took their name from Hugh, H-U, which means the creative force or source of will, and Mim, also called Mami, something that we call, many of us, refer to our mothers or grandmothers as Mami, representing the female guardian angels of birth, which is another title that came to be attributed to the wisest, goddess-minded Alchemy, the word Alchemy, is originally uh, what we called our scientists, alchemy. So the wisest scientists, the goddess-minded scientists, or alchemy, of each respective generation, each generation, they had a the wisest female. The wisest female was the mommy, and she received the title. This title that they were given is called Chabawes. Kabawes, K H A B A W E S, Kabawes, which means Lady of the Rib, as they held the secrets of that which is contained within the bone marrow, 
produced in the sternum or the breastplate of the ribs, which was and is still the key to mitochondria DNA. So these wise, female, goddess-minded scientists or alchemy held the secret of that which was contained within the bone marrow or the sternum. Now this is important because we just read in Genesis chapter 2 where Adam was put to sleep and one of his ribs was taken and from that rib a woman was formed. Now they've done the test. The men are not missing a rib. Okay, they remember they said, well only Adam's <laughs> only Adam missing his rib. Right? But we the men we, we, don't, we, we don't we're not missing a rib. And we have to wonder why God would have to take the rib of a man after he just made man, or I should say, he had to take the rib of a man to make a woman after he just made man from the dust of the ground. Why didn't just make some get some more dust and blow in her too? And get and, and <laughs> why, why you gotta get into all this theatrics now? After Adam now we gotta start cutting our ribs. Then put him to sleep. You, you know what I'm saying? Why didn't God know that Adam needed a woman when he met him? It's God now. He know everything. <laughs> God should know that, right? Or is our story being has it been contaminated and watered down to the point where we're being given an opinionated version? of the original story and therefore we don't really understand what is going on in, in the Bible and so these Kabawis, the lady of the rib they understood that they could go into the actual sternum or your breast, the breast bone and they could gather the, the bone marrow and manipulate the DNA to do genetic experiments. This is why this story is found, again, the Greeks refer to it as Genesis or the genealogy of Isis because they were manipulating the actual genes of the seed of the woman that is referred to in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and that's why the seed of the man is not mentioned because the woman was the mother of all living. Everything comes out of the mother uh, uh, on this planet. Alright? But it doesn't happen by itself obviously. There's a mother-father principle. Correct? So it goes on to say now that Chabawes was the title held by Mother Nunet, one of your great ancestors. Mother Nut, Mother Aset, and then eventually Mother Ninti and even Mirayam, Mother of Yahshua, that are all Eves on the Hebas, or tribal leaders of their respective generations. So, this whole idea of Adam and Eve has happened many times in our story, not to mention it happened in other people's story many times as well. It goes on to say, thus they became known as those who gave birth to mortals, simply mothers of all living. Mothers of all living. This time frame also precedes the graftation of the human being, whereby Hugh, again, the, which is the creative force or source of will, and main, M-A-N-E, comes from the Latin where it means spirits of the dead. So this is before who is the, the, who's being referred to as the Canaanite in the biblical scriptures and you must always remember that when the, when the concept or the precept of father and mother and family and church and everything that we know and hold dear to ourselves when you go when you understand what all of these things mean you have to go back to your story you have to go back to your time we always honored the mother. We still do. It's the Greco-Roman concept of first and foremost being 
very homosexual. Okay, which is what you're saying nowadays. Very homosexual. Very one-sided, very lopsided. Very chauvinistic. Okay? Man in the front, woman in the back. All of these things is what was brought and placed upon us as a people. This was not our way of life. This was not our way of life. When capitalism was being formed out of feudalism, the Europeans found matriarchal societies already at work, already being productive. They used the blueprint of the matriarchal societies to create the societies that you know today and then they move the woman on the side. <laughs> You're joking. No, I ain't like you need the book. Like we strong on you. And maybe we can choke you up. <laughs> Sit down or be sat down. Alright? And that's still how they operate today. Alright? Now I just talking about the white man. I'm talking about anybody that has the mentality of the beast. But that is what is being talked about in the book of Revelation. And Revelation is a book about this day and time. It's a book of prophecy. Right? And so, let us understand further how this woman became the mother of all living. Let's go to, in the original books of the Bible, page 132. Coming out of book number 8. The book of the birth of life forms on earth. Let's make that clear. Not in existence. On earth. Okay? There's a reason why I'm saying that. So, uh, page 132, we're looking at verse 5. Page 132, verse 5. And the Most High Heavenly One, Ande Rei, leads and loves humanity. Thus you must hold your peace and maintain your true religious identity even in the face of ridicule and adversity. Because people who didn't prepare to care for you when you decide to get your act together and start moving in the direction of the Most High Heavenly One. People who didn't have anything to say to you all of a sudden will become very concerned. And they'll want to try to understand what's going on with you. And why is it that you're doing this different and not different? Beware. If they weren't concerned with you when you were doing foolishness in the world, and tell them don't worry about you now that you're getting your act together. You understand? That's key. For that reason, as we teach you of how all life forms were birthed on Tar Earth and all Earth like planets, please understand that the first being to be birthed or grown on Earth was she which we the angelic guardians call the mother self. That's key because they'll tell you oh you're talking foolishness. You don't know what you're talking about. Except for the fact that scientists will tell you they don't say the mother self. They call it the daughter self. The daughter self. We your guardian angelic parents say this is the first life form seeded or implanted into the waters of tar earth and all Earth-like planets was and is the asexual daughter cell that was without a doubt born of the mother cell, thus feminine. So remember now, the seed had to be what? Yeah. The cell had to be injected. See, that's the male principle now. That's the male principle. Because the male principle and male energy, the centripetal force, comes from outside of the planet into the planet or towards the planet. The centrifugal or the female energy goes from the planet away from the planet. Alright, I just want to make sure we keep and understand the balance of what's going on in, 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 in context. When scientists of your latter day speak of asexual cells, see, the prefix a in the Greek means without. Okay, so they mean without sex or neutral genders. Right? When they speak about asexual cells, they often speak as if it is a neutral gender. When 
In fact, they should really be called mother cells and subsequent daughter cells, which are in fact female cells. So they call it an asexual cell, then they say it's a daughter cell. If you call it a daughter cell, it's female. <laughs> Come on now. And this cell is what all other cells, all other beings, came out of. You understand now are we saying mother of all living? So if it, if it was that way on the cellular level, then it would have to be that way once we grew into these organisms or this species of so-called human beings, you know, human and human beings. As below, so above. As above, so below. If it's happening on the cellular level, it has to happen on, on in the body or in, the, in humanity as well. You understand? If they were coming out of the woman in the cells, then they have to be coming out of the woman once we became so-called human beings. You understand? It's the science now. This is what any person who took even the first year of biology <laughs> will tell you, yeah, we learned that. Right? So it goes on to say, this F sexual mother cell has the F standing for female sexuality. So instead of asexual, it really should be F sexual. That's what we understand it as in the Holy Coptic Church. But that F goes even further because the symbol for iron is F-E, as in female. We live in an environment. The root word of environment is iron, the symbol of which is F-E, for female. Amun? So this iron, which links to the female guardian angelic host, Sakhmet. Watch, listen to what's going on now. This is all ties in. Sakhmet. Or Sakhmat. Who was one of the guardian, who was one of the great angelic overseers who watched the socks or socks or bags called cells develop to a state whereby they brought forth various forms of matter which led to ma'at or balancement. So Sakhmat oversaw or like a scientist observed this experiment of these cells or sacs forming from the single cell to the multi cell organisms. Okay? But then it goes on to say that these uh, uh, cells developed to a state whereby they brought forth various forms of matter of which we are a part of it which led to ma'at or balancement. So the reason why the physical was even being put into place was because the so-called etheric realm had been formed and there had to be balance. There had to be an etheric and a physical to create the balance. So it goes on to say, the outcome was that they gave birth to the foundation of all life forms. All life forms, not some all living, not some living, all living. I got to keep emphasizing all. Alright? The outcome of this was that they gave birth to the foundation of all life forms on earth through a process of metamorphosis or partial metamorphosis whereby all species are altered, transformed, or changed to the degree necessary for the respective species survival. Not for you and your selfish individualistic survival, but the species at large, which means the men and the women had to work together in order to sustain the species. So this Mother's Day, we have to be aware that it is our job as men, okay, I'm speaking as a man, I was a man, <laughs> to assist our women, our mothers, our young ladies back onto the throne because that's what the word aset actually means, the throne. 
When she's on the throne, she becomes an asset to society. When she is not on the throne, she is a liability to society. Now, are we beating up on the woman? No. Because somebody pulled her off of the throne. When the book of Exodus talks about the Hyksos, alright, before Exodus even starts, the little preface to Exodus, they talk about the Hyksos coming in to Egypt. They weren't in the entire land of Egypt. They were in a part of Egypt called Avaris or Tawaret or Waret is what they call it, which is which was short for Tawaret. Tawaret was and is the link of the solar biological signs, which they call astrology today in the Greco-Roman terminology. That Tawaret was the link between your celestial origins and your earthly birth by way of mitochondrial DNA. That mitochondrial DNA that links all people through the woman together. Okay? Through the woman together. This is key because the mitochondrial DNA, and they've done this experiment already, when they've taken samples from all different types of women, not just black women, and they've done the research to go back as far as they, they could, and it, it, it landed back to a female in Africa called mitochondrial Eve. So that mitochondrial has been passed on from generation to generation, and it keeps you in tune with the law of your mother. Alright? The law of your mother. Let's, let's understand what we're talking about when we talk about the law of the mother. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Sorry, chapter... Yeah, Proverbs chapter 1. Right at the beginning. The True Light Fellowship Hour brought to you by the Holy Coptic Church will be right back after these messages. Have a damaged bumper and looking for quality work at a good price? Let Bumper Tech repair your bumper by remanufacturing it to its original specification. Bumper Tech also offers a full line of auto body repairs and a wide range of plastic welding and repairs. Call us today for an assessment at 3940891676282088 or visit us at Soldier Road Industrial Park. Bumper Tech, quality without compromise. Art Ventures Limited, trading as floral arts, still creating beauty through the art of floral design. Your special location is all that matters to us, and we pride ourselves in maintaining close relationships with our clients. For wedding decor, receptions, or any special events, contact Art Ventures at 677-2860 or 393-3561. Visit our website at www.floralartsbahamas.com. Relax and let floral arts make your ideas come to life. Welcome back to the True Light Fellowship Hour, brought to you by the Holy Coptic Church, led in the Bahamas by Pastor Dr. Cleveland W. Enius III, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. So, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, all right, this King David is none other than Seti the first, and this Solomon is Ramazis the second, okay, who built the temple of Abydos. All right, these are things you can go and research. The temple of Abydos is where you find the proof that we had outside of the actual pyramids. That is, that we had the mechanical technology that is being, being used today, planes and helicopters and all these different things, uh, the hieroglyphs for them are found right in this temple. 
Yeah, it's in the area. See, Dendera is the area. All right? And so it goes on to say, To know wisdom and instruction, verse 2, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, in Christianity today, they use fear literally, and they escape. You don't come to church, you go into hell. Hell is a place that you will go to for eternity, and in the hottest and hottest fire, and they have all kinds of things that they tell you to scare you to go to church, scare you to pay tithes, scare you, scare you, scare you, scare you. That's not what this is talking about. The fear of the Lord is the reverence. The respect. All right? The fear or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and destruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. The law of thy mother. That word law is the word Torah. So what is this Torah that the mother had? That Torah is none other than the book of Ma'at. The same book that we read at the beginning of every year. And let's take a look at it. Because we, we need to appreciate the fact that when we stay in tune with our mothers that are in their right mind, <laughs> i got to say it that way, then we are guaranteed to be in tune with her law because the mother is the first teacher of the child 190 okay very good right at verse 1 it says lo behold an amazing thing the guardian angelic hosts that are students of Tahuti namely Mikael Recorder of the Guardian Angelic Host and Gabriel, voice of the Guardian Angelic Host, did speak forth to all members of humanity concerning the divine principles of Ma'at. So the law of the mother is the divine principles of Ma'at. Alright? Whereas the father now, just jumping back, right? My son here, the instruction of the father. What's the instruction of your father? It's so simple, right? Yeah. Right? So, it goes on to say, and this is what was said, O humanity, children of Anirui, you have cried out in your supplications many sunlit and moon reflective shadow hours seeking to know those things which humanity should avoid. And as such, as such, it is important that you be made aware of a foretime when we, the guardian angelic host, did gather to present ourselves before the throne of the Heavenly One at the great Kanisa Church of Dindera, located at Armana, with the chapel of Asaro. Remember, Armana is the city that was built by Ankh and Aton, who they call Ankh and Aten. Right? At the chapel of Asaru, the original sacrificial shepherd. During that great day and time, we were given basic commandments of true conscious morality and true religious identity. So the laws of Ma'at are based on conscious morality and true religious identity. What is conscious morality? Conscious morality is the morality that speaks to you through your conscience. You understand what I'm saying? This is key now. Because society has rules. And God has rules. And society would say what you're supposed to be doing. But your conscience may be saying, I ain't feeling that. There was one time where society said you weren't even human. 
You were three fifths of a human. I don't know what they got, why they do it in fifths, but anyway. I must see what they were drinking. Right? Three fifths of a human. Society said that you were property. Society? Oh, yeah, you were slave. You were property. Society says that they have the right. To step into one of the holy sacraments of the scriptures and tell you have to buy a license, go through them to get married. Mm. That's what society say. I would go out say. Mm. You understand? So conscious morality then is you being aware of the morality that's right within your DNA, RNA chromosomes, and your your true religious identity. See, when you were anyway interested in the truth, because the principles of Mahat, the law of your mother, when you go when you start going back to the truth, you're going back to mummy. You're going back to be breastfed, to be sustained. Because that breast, the symbol of that breast, is also the symbol of a cell. If you drew a circle and put a dot in the middle, the scientists would say, well, that's a cell. Some scientists would say, well, that's a sun. The baby would say, that's Baba. And they all, at the end of the day, represent the same thing, sustenance. Because all life came out of the cell. Which came out of the sun. You understand? And so, your true religious identity speaks to a reality in so far as you have an identity. Your identity is your passport. Your identity is your passport. Because then your passport is your... Identity. <laughs> Simple. You start traveling, you need to have your identification, and you need an identification with some other documents called the passport that allows you to travel. The same way your identity, your true religious identity, the same way your identity allows you to travel on the physical realm, your true religious identity allows you to travel on the spiritual realm. Because this is just this is, this is a short rest on your journey to the bosom of the Most High. So your true religious identity was given to you by your mother and father. Which is why you were told to honor your mother and father. So that your days could be long. Not just you, but you as a species. All of us had to honor our mothers and our fathers. So our true religious identity is that which allows for us to move through the plains. You will learn in the Holy Coptic Church that death is but a doorway to another part or dimension of existence. And if you don't go through your mother and your father, you cannot enter into the gates of heaven. Because as we said earlier, there are twelve gates. To heaven. Each one of those gates represents a tribe. The only way you can get into the tribe is through your mother and father. So it's back through your mother and father to the tribe into heaven. Which is why Mother's Day is so important. Because from your mother you were born and to her you will return to be born again. And that's why Yahshua, who was Speaking to the priest in this day and time, saying, No, you have to be born again. You have to find your mother. You have to go back into the womb. You have to gestate again. You have to be reformed. You have to be remade. You have to, you have to get to the, to, to the point where you put aside all of the opinions and the philosophies that have been given to you and be reshaped in the womb of your mother, of our mother the Holy Coptic Church that Wednesday was celebrated three years in the Bahamas. Three years. And as a church we're growing. Our mother is growing. Our mother is giving birth to all of those who are part of the brethren. The brethren speaks to those who have been birthed. Brethren is not a male term. So it means birth. Those who have been birthed by way of the Holy Coptic Church. 
by way of the holy Coptic rite of baptism or mikwa. And so it goes on to say these basic commandments of true conscious morality are such that if you embrace them with all your mind and all your heart and all your strength and, the, and all your power you shall be able to avoid many traps because mama always knew who was going to jail through the corner before you even knew don't no, hang with that one that one ain't going nowhere he can't come in the yard you can't go in his yard no 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 I want that she can be bragging right to her come come we ain't hanging with her you understand? Mommy knew. Grammy knew. You understand? And so you'll be able to avoid many traps, which often leads to the downfall of many members of humanity. Thereby, it is important that you uphold the true and balanced ways of your angelic genealogy. That's hard for some people to accept. I had some Jehovah's Witness come and pay me a visit yesterday. <laughs> second week in a row actually. And I don't like to be rude. I honestly wasn't brought up that week. So the first thing we came last week, they gave me there was a lady and her daughters and she gave me a nice um book to read. They gave me the little awake they call it awake. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they gave me like two. I read them, check them out, see what they're talking about. And yesterday I'm cleaning up, I'm trying to get things sorted out. BP pawn low again, so I'm like, okay, I really don't have time to sit with them like I would like to. I went outside, so we came back to pay you to visit and see if you read the book and if you have any questions. I said, but the last time you were here, I told you I'm a pastor of the Holy Coptic Church. And yes, I'll read your things, but I ain't becoming no Jehovah's Witness. I said, matter of fact, if you stay here long enough, you may be coming to church with me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right? I said, I don't be rude. Right? And this is on the topic of angelic genealogy. Because too many of our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters have been colonialized mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically to the point where they believe they're going to get to heaven through someone else's genealogy. So I asked the woman, I said, listen, I looked at the book. It was interesting. I say, but I don't see anybody in those books that look like you or me or your daughters. Right? Oh, well, you, well they're not really white. They're dark. I say, look, I argue with you. They're white people. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to see them as black. I say, even they put little bit of brown in their face is white features. I modern white people. That's their things. Charles Taylor Russell was a white man. So he should have made it for white people. I say, however, what you must understand is that I say, I was talking hard to them. I say, I ain't really talking hard to you. I don't want you to feel bad. I said, I'm very passionate about uh, what you're bringing here to me. I say, because that's poison to my children. See, that takes us away from the law of our mother. That takes us away from my heart. That takes us away from balancement. I say, a God who is a God of order, wouldn't he send, if he made so many different type of people in the world, someone who looked like those people to each and every one of those people? Why would he just send white people to go and talk to everybody as if they are the gateway to divinity? And they just reach. So divinity had to come with them, if that's the case. I say, no, ma'am. I can't do that. I might read them, but I ain't teaching it to my children. I said, now, if you want to teach that to your daughters, that's your business. I say, but as your brother, as your brother, I must let you know that you are lacking, unfortunately, the universal knowledge that will allow for you to become equal or, or even greater than other people because they will never teach you about who and what you're supposed to be because they want to rule you. And I say that's all you will ever be as a Jehovah Witness is you will be ruled, but you will never rule. 
So no disrespect, no love lost. But, yeah, yeah. They were listening, they were like, I say, you know, if y'all will come over here and catch a swim on the beach, hey man, I ain't got no problem with that. We can, we can light the grill. I say, because we ain't gonna let no religion get between us. I say, because I love y'all. But the poison you bring in around here, you have to keep that in your car. Because it wasn't even no Jehovah in Jehovah time. In the Bible time, in the Bible time, it wasn't no Jehovah. There wasn't no Jason. <laughs> and the closest thing you turn to Jehovah nowadays is Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said that to say, I ended the conversation by explaining to her. I said, the guardian angelicals are walking amongst you today. You're being blinded by someone else. You're being blinded. Someone is t taking you away from your mother and your father and they treat you like a stepchild. Because they keep telling you you're a human being. They keep telling you you're cattle. They keep telling you a slave. They got a name for you. But you have angelic genealogy. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. There are those of us who do look out into the sky and wonder what is out there. There are those of us who have had experiences with guardian angelic hosts. Either in our dreams or they have literally walked up amongst us and taught us. That's what the book of Hebrews chapter 13 talks about. The strangers that you meet that are angels. The word angel just means messenger and undeep. Ain't nothing spooky about it. But it says, Thereby it is important that you uphold your, the true and balanced ways of your angelic genealogy by safeguarding the rights of the true and first faith of all humanity, atonism. Why is atonism the first and true faith of all humanity? Because when the original people of this planet existed, no one else did. So all churches, all doctrines, all information that is held sacred came out of atonism or at oneism. That's not racist, that's just a fact. That's just a reality. Because humanity was not waiting for another group of humanity to save them. So what were we doing? The Hindu mind tell me, even though they found this skeleton called Lucy over three million years ago, they had no, they didn't have any writings. They didn't find any writings with her. I said, oh, so they're waiting for the Hindus to save them. They're waiting for the Bhagavad Gita. That's what they're waiting for. They didn't have any writings. Huh? That don't make no sense, man. My, my, my. My conscious morality said that's foolishness. You understand? So this law of our mother is key as we celebrate the mother on this mother's day. Verse nine now of Proverbs chapter one says for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy hair. It's talking about the law of the mother. And chains about thy neck. You want to know why we always want to wear chains? You always want to be filled out? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1. Alright, let's go back to verse 7 so we can be clear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Which means you won't be free. You're going to be bound to the law, to your culture, to your way of life, to your genetics, to expectation. You, this whole idea of freedom is a myth. Now you can be free from oppression. But the freedom of oppression is only long enough to allow you to bind yourself to your culture. 
You understand? That's what it's talking about. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let's wait to pit to murder this person. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. People going to work. They working hard. And then your friends tell them, man, let's go rob them. Like, like they owe you something. Right? Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. And hold as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. And we shall fill our houses with spoil. We can rob them. Huh? Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. That's what your friends can tell you now. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Don't listen to them. For their feet run to evil. And make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And you promise you show the net, the bird gone. And they lay wait for their own blood. And they lurk privately for their own lives. Because whatever you put out there got to come back. That's the law of your mother. Ma. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. Of concourse. In the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words saying. How long ye simple ones or foolish ones. Will ye love simplicity or foolishness? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. This is your mother talking now. We're coming into the age of ma'at, of balancemen. Turn you at my reproof. Verse 23. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. That's what's happening right now. The spirit, the karat consciousness is being poured onto you. And the secrets of the Most High are now being delivered unto you from mouth to ear and in book form so the secret just means secrete you understand so you're learning the mysteries in the book of of uh, you can stay right there in, 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 in Proverbs but I need I need to show you this first because there are many people who will tell you uh, you 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 ain't supposed to understand everything. Because God is a mysterious God, and so with God is being mysterious. You're supposed to just sit around and be dumb. All right, but that's not what it's saying. Psalm 25 verse 14. Sorry, Psalm. Me and Psalm. I just we, we stick a pen in Proverbs. We just jump to Psalm 25 verse 14. Because this is who this is you now. You got it, just say, I got it. <laughs> Let's read together. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So the secret ain't for everybody. So if God is still a mystery to you, then guess what? <laughs> ah, well, you probably don't have the reverence, the respect of who God is. And that's why you don't learn the so-called dark things of the Most High. And we in the Coptic Church do learn the dark things, the mysterious words, the parables, the sayings of heavens, of, of heaven, in the Holy Coptic Church. You have been listening to the True Light Fellowship Hour, brought to you by the Coptic Church of the Black Messiah, Journey Home Group International, and our advertising partners, of whom we are very thankful. We are located at number 72 Meadow Street in historic Baintown and led in the Bahamas by Pastor Dr. Cleveland W. Enius III, also known as Kahun Ankusara. If this message has been a blessing to you today and you feel it in your heart to assist us in bringing forth this weekly message by way of advertising or otherwise, or you wish a copy of this message, we ask that you please contact us at 242-426-1148 or email us at cupticrevealer at gmail.com that's q-u-b-t-i-c revealer at gmail.com or on Facebook 
the Coptic Church of the Black Messiah Journey Home Group International, Bahamas Branch. We bow to the divinity in each and every one of you by saying, Namastu. Oh, mm -hmm.